What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Birdhouse. I'm Bird. If you want to see a modern trap beat made like this, Then like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Yeah, so once again, welcome to the Birdhouse. My name is Bird. I'm a producer from Austin, Texas. Uh, today we're cooking up a modern trap beat for placement in FL Studio 2023. Um, my goal with these types of beats is always to keep it simple. I want to make a beat that doesn't um, do anything to discourage a rapper from rapping on it. That's the goal of this beat, is to get it placed and get a song made. So I'm trying to keep it simple and leave plenty of space for the rapper to occupy that space and really make it their own. At the same time, I want to create dynamics in the beat so there's some type of complexity, you know, skinny parts, fat parts, loud parts, quiet parts, complex parts, more simple parts, etc. So the beat keeps evolving. It's not repetitive and boring, and it ultimately makes a more interesting song. Uh, if you take a look at what... Uh, I did with this beat basically it's a three-part melody that makes up the intro and the hook if we look at the main piano melody it's just a d minor chord progression i've got the notes d f and a and then it drops down to a d minor sustained chord which is d e and a so you're just dropping the middle note down one semitone right uh and then to make it a little more interesting give it a little bit more bounce i've arpeggiated the notes so it goes from the root note D up to A, down to F, root note D up to A, down to E. And that basically just repeats. Yeah. Um, as you can see, I've chopped up the E note here at the end of two bars. And at the end of four, I've got a uh, like a one note um, from E up to F. These kind of single note intervals create tension. They're really common in trap music and in you know modern pop music and things like that. Um, and it kind of creates a segue from one section to the next. So as it moves from this first four bars and drops down to the second four bars, it creates that natural transition. Um, for the bass line, I've just copied the root notes, D, and then used that same one note interval, E and F, and I dropped it down uh, one octave and then a second octave. So we've got some like low mids and some lows. Uh, the entire second half of the melody is just dropped down a fifth. So we went from D, the root note, down to A, and everything just plays off of there at the same intervals. Um, the only addition to that is uh, these top notes I added, which are, again, just on the root note. Um, this D is up two octaves, and so it's creating some additional high frequencies, just kind of taking up more of the frequency spectrum um, with this first sound since it's kind of the meat of the beat. With the bass line, I used the same Keyscape Grand Piano preset. So same preset as used before. Sound selection is really important and those are sounds I know are gonna work. And I'm using the same notes with the only change being that little E that pops in there. But I didn't just pull that out of nowhere. That's straight from the melody, as you can see here. We're using this E note multiple times, and it's hitting in the same place at the end of this two-bar section before it rises up to that same E and F one-note interval. Um, with the bass line, I had originally put it down a fifth and then just decided that this note was going to wind up competing with the 808, maybe cause the mix to be muddy, and um, to add some more change, you know, that isn't happening in the first part of the melody, I have it down a fifth, but then up an octave. Boom. If we listen to those two together, again, taking up a bunch of the frequency spectrum already. Already sounding like a vibe. Uh, the only other part of the hook and intro is this contact string. This is the Forte Piano Crescendo preset. So it's got a little like piano layered in the background. Um, with this, it's the exact same chord progression or, or the same notes that I used in the first chord progression. I'm just keeping it. Um, uh, at the D minor chord until the end of two bars, it drops down to that sustained real quick. 
again, happening in the same place as in the melody, so it's not throwing off the music theory or anything like that. And then same bass line, down a fifth, up an octave, no top notes. And that's already sounding like something, you know, with room for a rapper to jump on. It's important to remember that, like, I'm not making a beat for my YouTube channel, even though I am, you know, to impress other producers. The purpose of a beat like this is to get a rapper to rap on it. I made this beat in the morning, and it was placed with an artist who bought it later that day. It's already a song coming out on his EP, and I want things to move at that pace. So if I can make beats for rappers and really keep that as my North Star to make sure that you don't do anything to push a rapper away from it. When it moves from the hook to the verse, I'm using the exact same piano preset, exact same progression, no changes. So it's just staying the same there. Uh, I took the exact same chord progression, no changes, and copied it over to this Omnisphere pad, which is Analog Memorial Ensemble. And if, uh, like I said, I want wavy parts and simple parts, complex parts, ambient parts. I want the beat to evolve and change within that framework of being a simple beat for a rapper to rap on. If we hear that with the piano. And then exact same violin, only I took out the bass line and I dropped it down an octave. And if you kind of listen for the transition from the verse into the hook, right? That's the type of dynamics I'm talking about. There's a noticeable, tangible, like even emotional change from here to this part right here. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, for the drums, these are all DY 808 Mafia, like Southside drums. Shout out to them. Um, Again, sound selection is so important. These are drums that I have that I know are gonna work. I've used them time and time again. I'm gonna use them a bunch more. Hey, 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 hey. And then added the bass line, of course, following the root note again. D, using that same E to F interval. We went down a fifth and up an octave for the exact same reason. As you can see here, if we drop down to these notes, that starts to be kind of low in the register. That might not be picked up on some sound sources. We want drums that are gonna hit on cell phones, laptops, car speakers, everywhere. Yeah. And again, just kept it simple because of what the root note's doing in the melody, right here with this D and this E and F, you know, other than maybe jumping up at this E like I did in some of the other bass lines, um, they're, they're, you know, keep it simple. Keep it right there with the, uh, with the melody. If I wanted to move this up to E, that's cool. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, let's keep it. With the mix on this beat for the melody, <coughs> excuse me, for the melody, I've just got light EQ cutting out some of the lows, in some cases, some of the highs, and then a Valhalla vintage uh, reverb on each one, you know, cut down. This one's down to 11%. You know, never want to do too much with the reverb. That's going to be a telltale sign of kind of amateur music. But as much as I can use that reverb to broaden things, put things back, you know, just kind of change the width and the depth of some of these sounds. Um, and then everything's running through the melody bus that I have here with the SSL Waves compressor. Again, just doing light work. Um... Same thing on the verse, you know, nothing extra. And then on the drums, literally nothing. I'm 
not a single plug in put on any of these SSL bus compressor. I'm just gluing them together because I started with drums that knock already. I do not need to mix these drums. If they need to be mixed, I'm going to trust the process and let the engineer handle that when the song's getting made. So I just want to make sure this beat is knocking and I'm not really worried about everything that's going to happen after the beat gets selected and winds up going towards being on the album because, again, I trust the process. I know how that works. Just make sure that when you send it, it's hitting for the rapper. The rest will take care of itself. Uh, with that said, we can hear this drop in. Keep hitting my mic, dog. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, go. And all I'm really doing at this point is just trying to find more ways to create dynamics. Got the hi hats out. All right. When we drop into the verse, I'm going to cut the hats and the clap. snares and the kick so that 808 is riding by itself all wet there right it's like you're missing the punch but in order to appreciate it when it comes back you got to miss it ah and it's back kick hitting and then now we're gonna like we're gonna pull all the water out all punch no splash same thing, you're, you know, that rapper's filling up this void right here. He's going in, kind of killing it, going into the hook, and then splash. And that's the type of dynamics I'm talking about. Simple, but effective. End of the second verse, I created this little bridge just by pulling the piano out. again so it's kick and clap only and again if there's that moment where they're like oh, I missed the bass it's like right when they have that feeling it comes back you can't miss something without taking it away you can't appreciate it when it's back without having missed it so it's just like part of the process it's got to be there yeah Beat's gonna carry us out, and we're done. I mean, really, we're just missing one thing, to be honest. The burnout. No doubt. Hey, so that's pretty much it for this cookup. I hope that kind of helped explain the process of trying to make a simple beat for placement. Um, you know, I've kept that as my North Star for years, and I get a lot of beats wrapped on. So I hope that helps you. I hope the breakdown made some sense. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, drop them in the comments below. Uh, I'll take a look at them for sure. If there's a certain type of beat you want to see me cook up or break down, I'm definitely down to do it. That said, I appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm a YouTuber now, so you got to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, share this with your people, all that stuff. I'll see y'all next time. The burnout.